you know or clips uh, other basically over that's laid over other video um, that way you guys can spend less time looking at me and uh, you know looking at this beautiful place that I live in uh, in Southern California in case you haven't seen the first vlog I live in San Diego and the weather's been really good ever since we had kind of like a little bit of a rain thing for a couple of weeks and that's a big deal here for some of us it is, some of us it isn't. Anyhow, so that's kind of the update on the vlog. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna do a mix and mash of all the channels that I like. So I do watch a lot of car ones, but there's some other ones that I, I, that I do like. And um, I'm gonna do a little bit of everything that I like about them, I think, just because I think it'll give you a little bit of variety and um, hopefully it'll be a good mashup. Um, so real quick, the channels that I watch mainly are, for let's say the car ones, is like Salamandran, uh, Spencer Berg, uh, Strat, uh, Strat, Stratman, and uh, Joe Knows Best are probably
probably the ones I watch the most. Uh, there's some other ones as well. Um, if you are new to YouTube, you probably maybe don't know who Casey Neistat is, but he's like one of the top vloggers uh, out there. So, but he definitely has some skills. Like he definitely has, you know, some great equipment and some creative, he's definitely very creative. Um, so check out his videos. He has a ton of videos. I mean, there's probably like a thousand videos from Casey and they're all, all different. Uh, most of his are kind of like, I would say are, you know, kind of life things that are going on and a lot of tech stuff. So like a lot of drones, cameras, things like that. Um, anyhow, check them out. Can't go wrong. So I'm, I want to kind of mix it up. You know, I want to do some car reviews and we have a couple of cars already lined up for the next couple of vlogs. And then I want to do a little bit of like day to day, um, you know, kind of things that are a little bit more interesting that I can still give you some content with. Uh, and uh, some good footage of and then maybe some kind of like I don't want to call them adventures but you know maybe if I have some friends in the car you know we can talk shit about the car usually car stuff or whatever stuff um, and, and just, just some other other stuff anyhow so this one this, so this is the, the kind of the update I think, I think the title is uh, why am I excited and what I, why I hate um, the things I hate about my S4. Uh, just to kind of finish out the whole S4 um, topic, I guess. Just finish it and then we can move on to other cars. So that's why I'm excited. Um, vlog one done. I have some great support coming from friends. Uh, my wife's on board. And uh, you know, it, you always want your, you know everybody around it to be supportive try to do something brand new something way out of your you know I'd say your, your normal day to day like your comfort you kind of start building things up in your head you're thinking like oh people think this is stupid or they're gonna laugh at me or whatever um, you know I'm a pretty confident individual either way if somebody didn't like it I could care less I'll still keep doing it but it's definitely nice you know when somebody says like hey this is great like keep this up I think this is this is a good idea. Um, you know, it's like I'm glad you're stepping out of your you know little typical day-to-day -day box of activities. So I'm excited, right? So and I'm, I'm starting to get better. I'm starting to kind of think about hey, what kind of footage I can I can get during the day when I'm you know doing my regular nine to five job and things like that. So um, today is a working day. I'm obviously not dressed like I'm working, but I work from home. Uh, let's say half the week and then I go on appointments today I just didn't have an appointment and not that I need to justify it to you guys but I just um, went to see an uh, old co-worker for lunch and I'm just basically driving back home and um, so let's get really quick into the things I don't like about this particular s4 some of these some of these things are gonna be a little general to this platform of a car but it's um, I'm mainly gonna talk about this car so the one thing that really kind of, kind of drives me nuts day to day is the way these seats were mounted in these cars. It's like uh, basically like one rails this way on the side of the car and one's on the bottom. Or usually both, uh, both are on the bottom. Well, I think nobody thought it was gonna be an issue, but clearly after some time, either things get loose or something else, like this seat rocks a little bit. You know, so when you're braking, especially in traffic, like you're braking, accelerating, the seat shifts a little bit, but it's just enough to annoy you. And I've tried fixing it, and it's kind of like, outside of like putting some duct tape on the, on one of the mounting points to kind of like thicken up the little slider that's in the rail, which I don't really want to do because I can't imagine that would last very long. Um, it doesn't seem to be a fix that I can find. And I've tried like jamming things in there, but the problem is it's the, the track is kind of like tight in the beginning and then looser in the middle and then tight again so you can't anyhow it doesn't matter um so that's one annoying thing about this car uh on two these cars i don't believe audi could ever have gotten a good balance of like weight distribution on because they put the engine entirely pretty much most of the engine sits in front of the front axle 
which means that there's a lot of weight in the front, which means no matter what you really do and how good you are at setting up a car, you're never gonna get this car to be a 50-50 balance. Um, and th this kind of gives you um, oversteer. And so, and oversteer for those of you guys who don't know, oh girls, uh, if you go into a turn really sharp, basically your front wheels are losing traction. So you're, instead of going that way, you're going kind of like that way. And um, we're under, wait, but, and understeer is at like the opposite. It's where your rear comes out, and instead of going that way, you're going more like this way because the car is being pivoted. So that's kind of the thing. It's it, that's just kind of like a general thing. Day to day, this doesn't bother me at all. But you know, there are a few times where I try to hit a corner a little harder, and I have pretty much the widest setup on tires as you can get in this car. Um, you know, you still get some of that and where you know like an m3 is a little bit better it's balanced better i think it corners a little bit better in a wet it's a different story but on dry which is usually dry here you know it, it's not the best setup so that's two things the other thing about specifically about this car and if you looked at uh, my other video there's it's silver really light silver alcantara seats and like centers right so centers and door um and the door cards. The problem with that is it's basically white. So that means if you work on your car or you happen to get dirty, you know, you're constantly paranoid that you're gonna ruin your seats. And, you know, maybe not ruin them per se, but, you know, you're gonna have to deal with getting a lot of things cleaned and everything like that. Um, well, that was messing around with the seat. There's a lot of grease there. You know, you have to be super careful not to kind of like, you know, touch the seats anywhere it's it's a it's a pain um this was an option given i didn't buy this car new so i didn't spec this out um this is actually like the upgraded option where regular leather was just kind of standard and i would have actually preferred the regular leather just in general like with any car that i have and um so that's that uh these cars are kind of high in maintenance you know, they have a lot of control arms, especially in the front. There's four, so there's two on the bottom, two on the top, just on one side, you know, and then there's other bushings and things like that. Um, there's a CHP passing me by. And, um, you know, so I've, I've had four B5s and I've had to replace my control arms on all four of them. They just wear, it's a wear and tear item, but, um, but there's a lot of kind of things like that where, on a lot of regular cars, it just seems a little, a little bit less. Now, this car specifically has been a gem, knock on wood. I've had very little issues with this car. It's been properly taken care of. It's been maintained properly. You know, I did do the control arms on this car. I did re I put on coilovers on this car. I pretty much the suspension's been fully replaced on this car, outside of the rear control arms, which is still good. Um, Oh, the one thing, and I'll insert the picture here. Um, is the the information screen in between the gauges? Mine is still good. It seems to it seems to it seems to be showing signs of this issue now. Basically, you start uh, missing lines. Um, off the screen so it's not pixels it's actual lines and I replaced one of these in my other car and um, you literally have like 50 soldering points for this L little tiny LCD screen um, and those connections I guess just tend to wear and um, you know basically you're kind of stuck because nobody you can you can pay somebody to fix it it's like 150 bucks you can buy the screen try to fix it yourself um, my results were kind of like this. I had, I did it in the wagon. It was like 30 bucks, I think, for the LCD. You have to take the gauges apart, which not that big of a deal. Um, but the soldering was kind of a pain. And to be completely frank, it only worked for about six months. And then now it does this whole disco show where you can't see anything um, on that, you know, on that screen. So, but this car is still good. Only in the morning, because it's 
kind of show me like a line or two and then it seems to go away um, and really that's it I mean but there's maintenance is gonna be like your other thing like if you guys are, if you think you're considering buying especially a, a, an s4 model you know keep in mind they're older cars I can tell you you're at some point gonna have to do control arms you're gonna have to do um, wheel bearings you'll probably have to replace some sensors and depending on how old your car is and how well it's been maintained you know rubber hoses and things like that vacuum lines are very likely to um, to need you know to will need to be replaced but other than other than that all oh, coil packs that's another thing a lot of these cars Again, once they get higher in the miles, the coil packs start, start going. Um, I think the turbos had actually the crappier ones. Um, I believe there's some newer ones that are much better. So once you replace them, you're kind of good to go for a long time. So guys, that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching my vlog. Uh, please subscribe. Again, we're gonna have some more, um, some other cars coming here very soon. And um, thank you to uh, thank you for your time and I'll see you next time.